this tale you little buck. Where would the world be if we all simply scrambled up things we didn't want and popped them away? Actually, I think I may have just invented a new game here. Spider mincing. <laughs> Once upon a time, people wore tights to stop rats running up their trouser legs. In them days, rats were enormous because people threw their rubbish into the street and rats loved the rubbish. Then a clever clot called Mr. Dustbin invented this and rats grew thin and hungry and died out. Mr. Dustbin, however, grew rich and fat and retired to Bognor Regis to drink beer. One hundred years later, however, a girl of very little brain neglected to use Mr. Dustbin's invention and started a plague that was even more terrifying than rats. The girl's name was Bunte Porker. <laughs> Bunte was as large as a double-decker bus because she never stopped eating. But it wasn't the quantity of food that was the problem. It was the packaging. Plastic cartons, scrunched up sweet papers, and soggy pizza boxes. Filling dustbins wasted valuable eating time, so Bunte simply dropped her wrappings where she stood. <laughs> People pointed out that she was creating a litter mountain, but it didn't stop her. She just made herself a mega large Macintosh with extra deep pockets and scattered her gluttonous junk at night when nobody was looking. Bunty Porker was a litter bug from hell. <laughs> In no time at all, her litter mountain covered the whole country. It clogged up streets, filled in lakes and flattened mountains. It stretched up through the clouds as far as the eye could see. Whole families were trapped in their homes. And farm animals were buried in crud. Very soon, Bunte was the only person who ever went outside. She was the only person big enough to wade through the litter swamps. She was the only person who could stand the foul pong that hung over the land like a damp blanket. Then, one day, they came. The big black bug. To them, the pong was pure heaven. It was like waking up in the morning and smelling toast downstairs. They came from Bulgaria in their hordes to slurp and scavenge, to swill and squeak, to goop and guzzle, to blow up and float like the rats had done before them. It was the queen who snapped first. Yes. Queen here, Prime Minister. Stop being a layabout and do something about this rubbish. I can't get out to walk the corgis. Oh, I'll, I'll get on it straight away, you imagine it. Too right you will, chummy. They're only little dogs and they can't hang on much longer. helicopters and 200 troops squelched into London under the command of one Colonel Buffy. <laughs> Operation Capture Bunty, present and correct PM. My troops are fully camouflaged. She'll never see us coming. Meanwhile, Bunty was busy stuffing her pockets for that night's litter trip. <laughs> At the stroke of midnight, she left her house, 
Belly flopped into the sticky black river that flowed outside her front door and swam down the road to the foot of the litter mountain. Blue bottles buzzed as she heaved herself out of the slime and climbed towards the sunny. Something glooped in the darkness, but Bunty pressed on. The quicker she could dispose of her litter, the sooner she'd be home in bed. <gasps> there it was again, that rustling. In the moonlight, she clearly saw the mountain move. There was something inside it, something huge and hungry, something slavering and slurping, trying to dig its way out. Colonel Buffy was waiting to capture Bunty in a classic pincer movement. Wait for it, lads, wait for it. Don't anybody move until you can see the whites of her eyes. Lord Rubber Duck, sir, what's that horrible noise? Silence in the ranks. Stand by to attack. Bunty was standing on the putrid peaks, offloading her foul cargo, when suddenly the air was filled with screaming and shouting. The colonel's classic pincer movement had begun. But before his troops could lay a hand on Bunty, the litter mountain shook at him, and a long, black feeler slid out of the rubbish like a tentacle from the deep. Retreat! The cowardly colonel withdrew his troops and left Bunty Porker to face a classic pincer movement of quite a different kind. Bunty felt the earth shudder. She lost her footing and slipped. Whereupon a second feeler twitched its way through the quaking mire. It grew and grew until it was thirty feet long. Bunty couldn't believe her eyes. This wasn't possible. No buck was that big unless... Her heart trembled and stopped. Unless the big black bugs from Bulgaria had been eating the rubbish and grown into giant black bugs. The mountainside tore open in front of her. Two enormous black pincers flashed past her head. The litter bug was hungry. With one enormous gloop, the giant jaws sucked up three tons of litter, and the buck licked its lips. <laughs> when the greasy chip papers had floated back to Earth, Bonte Porka was nowhere to be seen. She had disappeared along with all the rest of the rubbish. The litter bugs ate Bunty's mountain, then flew away in search of food elsewhere. But Bunty's gloopy demise served as a reminder to others. Nobody dares drop litter now. Nobody, that is, except for big black bugs. So, Spindle Shanks, I trust you use litter bins as litter bins, as restaurants. I thought as much. And what's your favourite? A double fleas burger with a side order of French flies? Mm.